How's it going everyone, Chris here, and welcome back to another Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Countdown video. We only have 137 days left until the game's release on December 7th, and today we'll be looking at another supposed leak. As always, we have no idea if this leak is true or not, so make sure you take it with a grain of salt, and realize that I'm talking about this just for fun. If you'd like to read along while I talk about it, you can find the link to the original post in the description bar down below. Now with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into the newest leak. This leak was posted on 4chan on July 19th and it is titled Smash 5 Insider Information and comes from a user named CrackerFighter. So again we see another post from someone who is not an anonymous source. It starts by saying so yeah, I'm sure you guys are all sick of the fake Smash Switch leaks going around, but here's another one claiming veracity. I know that you're probably not going to believe this, and that saying I don't really care one way or another won't help with that, but nonetheless I feel compelled to post the information I've come across. I'm in contact with an acquaintance working on the graphics team for Smash 5. He's been in contact with me for a while now, and this is all based on information I typed down from face-to-face -face meetings with him. He doesn't have information on when these reveals are going to happen, or what their trailers are like, but he does have huge information on how their move sets are coming along. In total, there are 6 newcomers and 4 new Echo Fighters, including the ones revealed so far. The first two newcomers are Geno and King K. Rule. These two were mainly taken from the popularity poll, and Bandana D was considered, but Sakurai couldn't really think he could find many creative ways to use him. Chibi Robo was also considered, but the two you have now went out in terms of popularity, so he had less priority. While Sakurai is sticking to not playing DLC until the game is fully finished, the possibility is still open here. Gino plays with most of his moves from Super Mario RPG and they're pretty much one-to-one -one recreations. Gino Beam, Gino Whirl, Gino Flash, etc. The only substantially altered one is his recovery, which is a variation on Gino Blast that he fires downwards. K. Rool also borrows a lot from his games with a crown throw, his blunderbuss, and a helicopter pack for recovery, as well as his own variation on the Bowser Bomb that is more horizontal distant than vertical for his down special. His final smash is his giant form from Jungle Climber dropping cannonballs in classic fashion. He also has costumes based on his alter egos from Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3, but they don't have alternate colors. We also have two brand new third party characters. The first is Yuri Lowell. He was picked largely due to his popularity in Japan. For those who don't know, Yuri is so popular that he was put into a Tails Hall of Fame with Leon Magnus and was permanently removed as a voting option from the yearly popularity poll. Lloyd was also on the drawing board, but, well, he's not even the most popular character in his own game, and isn't even popular among the Japanese audience in general. The proximity to the release of the Vesperia re-release was also a factor in this decision. All of his smash and special attacks are arts from Vesperia. Azure Edge, Ghost Wolf, Destruction Field, and Wailing Havoc for special attacks, and Shining Fang, Lone Wolf Charge, and Crushing Eagle as smash attacks. His final smash is his Divine Wolf Art, leading into Heavy Blade Wing. It's another scripted event attack, mainly because the dev team thought that using the Blade Wing outside of a scripted event would cover too much of the stage. Next we have a character named Travis Touchdown. Suda51 wasn't joking when he said he was going to demand Sakurai for this, so it's kind of like what happened when Kojima begged Sakurai to put Snake in. Smash attacks all use the Rose Nasties, where, while his Tilt, Jab, and Special just use the standard Bloodberry, with a few punches and kicks mixed in. His standard Special is Blueberry Cheese Brownie. Sakurai wanted desperately to include the slot mechanic, but he didn't want to base a whole playstyle around luck. His Up Special is based on the jumping attack he gets from the Memory of White, functioning like a diagonal version of Ike's Ether. His side special is a charge beam katana slice, all of his grabs are based off his wrestling moves, and his final smash is summoning the Glastonbury. It kind of functions like Giga Bowser, except it gets 3 slashes across the screen that don't insta-kill the fighters. So that's everything in terms of new fighters, and now we move into the Echo Fighters. There's not much to say here in terms of moves, because they're almost exactly the same aside from a few visual differences and some redone final smashes. First we have Shadow, who is an Echo Fighter for Sonic. His final smash, Super Shadow, places Chaos Spears while teleporting around, before they all hone in on the opponents. Then we have Hilda, who is an Echo Fighter for Zelda, and her final smash is her summoning Yuga to trap an opponent in a painting. It's functionally identical to the Triforce of Wisdom. Then we have Dark Samus, who is an Echo Fighter for Samus. The general look of her projectiles and such have been actually altered so that they look much more phase on -y. alongside the property changes. Her final smash is exactly the same though, because she's one of the more lower effort Echo Fighters like Daisy or Lucina. 
then we know that there is a classic mode, but he does not know how it is structured. But there are supposedly some intermittent minigames. Speaking of which, Break the Targets with the Difficulty System, akin to Brawls, has returned, albeit with stages that are based on actual games. He knows that Mario and Zelda are the easy and normal stages. Race to the Finish has also returned with a new stage in a format based on Melee's version, and so is Target Blast with two new stages. After that, we talk about Adventure Mode. This isn't a story, but there are two routes, Classic and Ultimate. Classic Mode is filled with the Melee stages, while Ultimate has new content, all of which are actual adventure stages featuring bosses, with no reused stages in between. Work on some of the stages hasn't been finalized yet, but he does know a bunch of them. He is aware that there is a Mario stage that has you going through the Odyssey version of Bowser's Castle, a Zelda Breath of the Wild stage that has you running through the Divine Beasts, a Sonic Forces City stage with an infinite boss fight, and a Kid Icarus stage based on Palutena's Temple and Uprising, with a Chaos Kin as a boss, presumably after a fight with Palutena. The final stage is a revamped version of Master Fortress, who's been removed from Classic Mode. So now that we've gone over the leak in detail, let's discuss it a little bit. So first of all, everybody is expecting Geno and King K. Rule to join the roster, so I'm not even going to go over that, because they're most likely going to be in the game. I think their movesets are very interesting, and I think that they would work well playing both Super Mario RPG and Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3. I feel like both of these movesets would work well for them, and I think that this would be the best way to implement them in the game. So then we move on to the new third party characters, and honestly I have no idea who either of these characters are, which makes me kind of feel like this leak is a little bit legit. Because Sakurai has done this before where he throws in a no-name character, like Marth here, or Mr. Game & Watch, or uh, Rob, but Yuri and Travis Touchdown, I've never even heard of these characters before. Um, I think that they're both pretty interesting. One of the attacks for Travis Touchdown is Blueberry Cheese Brownie, I just think that's extremely interesting. And I would love to see both of these characters in the game because I like how Sakurai takes underrepresented franchises and makes them like very popular. Although I guess Yuri is already pretty popular in Japan, so I'm not sure like how much more popular he can get, but he'll probably get more popular here in the United States. I just think that these two characters would be welcome additions to the cast if this does end up happening. In terms of the Echo Fighters, I'm excited for all three of them. I think that Shadow would be a good Echo Fighter for Sonic. Even though he has a pretty unique moveset throughout the entirety of the Sonic games, I would still love to see another Sonic character in the game, even if it's just an Echo Fighter, so I would love it if Shadow joins. Dark Samus, I'm not really sure, um, because Samus had a character alt for Dark Samus anyway, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. I guess it's cool uh, for all you Metroid fans out there, because we'll have three um, Metroid characters in the game, but I'm just not a huge fan. And then Hilda from Zelda, I am so excited for. Zelda is actually one of my mains, which means I will be trying out Hilda, and I'll be playing with her a lot. I think that her final smash of her summoning Yuga to trap an opponent in a painting is really amazing. I just, I really hope this leak turns out to be true, because I really, really, really want to see Hilda in the game. It would just be amazing, and I'll be very happy. In terms of the classic mode, I don't know how I feel about that. Um... He doesn't know anything about it, so whatever, it's just some intermittent minigames thrown in there. Uh, break the targets, that's fine. Um, target blast, that's going to be pretty cool. Overall, I think it's pretty cool. And then adventure mode, I think is amazing. The classic mode filled with the melee stages and the ultimate mode filled with like brand new stages and going through all the bosses. I just think that sounds so awesome and I cannot wait to see if this leak does turn out to be true, if this is legit, because this would just be an amazing, amazing game. So. Now that we've gone over the full leak in detail and I've given you my opinions, do I think this is real? I think this has a better chance of being real than most of the other leaks we've seen because it's just so random. Yuri and Travis Touchtown, I've never heard of them, I know a lot of people haven't heard of them, so I think it's very possible that that gives this leak some credibility. But anyways guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and favorite, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and take care.